All right, good morning, everybody. We're gonna go ahead and get started. We're on a fine timeline today. Um, our presenter, Shoni Ivins from the Westfield office is en route and he will begin his presentation shortly. How's everyone doing today? Good, good. I am not Tyler DeMars, as you can see. Um, so I am in this place today. So hopefully I can do a great job. Um, so again, welcome to today's team meeting. We're just gonna go over a couple of announcements um, and then jump into the presentation. So give me one second. Our, our vendor spotlight will be Ibex. Uh, they are in route. They'll be providing lunch also, uh, I believe from Olive Garden. So joy for that. Family reunion. We Family reunion is right around the corner. Prices for tickets are going up. Um, as they have already of September 6th. So if you haven't got yours, go ahead and register now. They will be going up again November 1st. Um, and you can register at events.kw.com. How many show of hands have your tickets already or registered? Early bird special? Awesome. Our referral contest is alive and well. I have Stephanie Maldonado, if you want to give a little brief on that. Or pass them. Um, really strong and I hope that we can finish strong so if you have anybody that you think would be a great fit for KW you just want me to talk to them you don't have to think they're for sure going to sign up leave that to me and just send me the name and I'll chat with them um, we give you a gift card if you just give us a name so you can get some free lunch as well as you'll be entered in if you have five or more for lunch with me and Tyler and of course, each one also gets you a ticket for the $1,000 that we'll give at the end of the month. So please, if you have anyone that you can think of, let me know. As well as um, our TikTok is still going live and strong. So if you haven't already followed us, please do. We're also going to reach out over the next few weeks for testimonials um, to see if anybody would be willing to apply here on our TikTok and give us your reasons why you stay with KW and what you love. So look for that as well. Also this Thursday, 9.30 to 10.30, our principal broker, Rich Summers, will be presenting guiding your client through breaches of contract. Should be an excellent presentation. Please join. Um, he starts at 9.30 sharp. There is no Zoom option for this. This is in-person only. So look forward to seeing you all there. Client appreciation event, also Thursday, Kuahara Pumpkin Patch. We have Lisa Gonzalez here. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we are doing great for ticket sales. We are combining this with uh, Salt Lake and Midvale offices. This, is it working? Okay. Sometimes I do too close and then it, uh, that's my problem. So I'm not good with microphones. Um, so yeah, so we have about 300 more tickets that we can sell between all three offices. So I'd love it if you haven't given us your ticket count that you get it in right away so that we can um, take care of that and you can secure those tickets. I know there's a lot of people in the last couple of days that reach out and go like, I have 20 people that wanna come, can I add more? Yes, today it's a yes, so please do that. Get them in. Um, Janelyn, this is Janelyn, in case you don't know, she's on um, the committee with me and she is um, working with people to sign them up to help with check-in. We've got Marcel and other people in title they are gonna help with that, but we have a lot of people coming, so we need a lot of volunteers. So if you're happy to do that, then you can get a hold of Janelyn. I will put my on the board. Um, there's going to be an early check-in and a later check-in. The first one's from 5.15 to 7 and then from 7 to like 8.30 around there. So if you guys want to do like something with your kids or your clients in the beginning, you can do that and then check in later or you can check in and then go find your clients. So any help would be appreciated if you want to partner with somebody and do like 515 to like 
six and then do six to seven and divide a shift, let me know there's that option too. But I will put my number on the board. Thank you so much. <laughs> Does anybody have questions about the event on Thursday? Okay, yes, we will have donuts. What was the other question? Um, yes, I mean, we need volunteers for check-in and for donuts because um, we don't want everybody's hands reaching in the donut boxes. So if you could help with that, that would be great. Uh, we'll have donuts and we'll have water and we ordered 2,000 donuts. So Ibex is picking those up and shout out to them. They are covering like a part of the cost of the donuts this year. So yay, just a little promotion for Ibex. I'll, I'll stop talking. Thank you, Lisa. Right. So our guest speaker, Shoni Ivins, CEO, team leader at KW Westfield. He'll be presenting today, driving success in Q4. Um, lunch should be arriving around 1130. So again, all are welcome to stay afterwards and indulge in that. And then once Ibex is here at the end, they'll give a little uh, introduction of their business for those that may not be familiar with Ibex home warranty. In front of you, on your desk, you have some handouts that uh, will be part of the presentation coming up. I ask any Q&A afterwards or any aha, aha moments that want to be shared, please use a mic. Our folks on Zoom cannot hear any questions or um, discussions going on. So if we can pass the mic around, that would be great. One more. Yeah, sorry. Um this is not the event, this is about intro lend. So Janelle Rogers um, has gone into the finance industry and helping people with wealth management. And so we are bringing in Cody. He's worked out of the Westfield office. Come, come up here, Cody, so everybody can see your face. Um, and he uh, is just doing all kinds of great things with Westfield. So he's going to be our loan officer here, a uh, temporary as we find a new person to replace Tanil. Um, and so I'm just going to let him talk for just a minute. But um, this is our new face of Interland in our office right now. Hey guys, yeah, she pretty much covered it. I'm just here if you need anything. Um, I'll probably be spending some time in the office. I don't know the days or the hours quite yet. Um, this is all news to me as well, but. Um, I'll, I'll leave my phone number up on the board. If you guys need anything or have questions about Interland or lending in general, give me a call. Happy to answer. How are you guys doing? Good. You okay if we turn up the heat in here a little bit? Is that all right? Not, not, li not literally. It's okay. Thank you very much. No, uh, I, I can get intense at times. I'm passionate about uh, the topic we're going to talk about today. And so just know with some of the things that we're going to cover, um, you might seem like or think that I'm getting intense um, and it's by design, uh, but I'm grateful for each of you that are here today. Uh, good to see you. Um, and uh, the one thing that I want to start with is that you guys have an amazing team leader. Uh, Tyler is just a phenomenal individual, and I'm sure he's impacted you guys in a positive way. Uh, I'm super grateful for his friendship, and uh, I know that you guys have something special. Um, he wanted me to put this together specifically for you to help you drive your business in Q4 and get some momentum going into 2024. Does that sound good? Cool. So, um, and if you do have questions, you can actually throw them out while we're going. If, if something sparks your attention or catches your attention, we can jam on that. Uh, but the, the reality is that by the end of today, what I want you to have is at least a game plan going into quarter four that you can feel very confident in, okay? And I'll give you some tools, some resources that can help with that uh, that you've got in front of you, but don't pay attention to those quite yet. We'll get through some content first before pulling those up. So a uh, little backstory on me. I started uh, sales in the door-to-door -door industry back in 2013. Um, I'll, I'll call it serving time. I served seven years in that space and uh, was all over the country uh, from West Coast to East Coast uh, and loved that experience. And it taught me a lot of the foundational principles that guide my business today. 2016, I had a great mentor who uh, pushed me into getting my first rental property. And uh, at that time, I told him that I was saving up my funds, my cash, until the market would crash. And then I'd go and jump into real estate. And this is 2016. 
And I'm so grateful that he told me why that was not a good idea, why I should not wait and why I should get into my first property. So 2016, my wife and I bought a townhome in Draper and really started our investment journey from there. I didn't get out of the door-to-door -door industry until 2020, um, which is right after I got my real estate license. So I've been an, a real estate investor for over seven years, uh, got my license the end of 2019, really started practicing in 2020 as I was making that transition out of door-to-door. 2020, 2021, I helped uh, a little over 50 families get into rentals. Investors are, are kind of my, my focus point. And so a lot of people in my network uh, have a similar goal of building passive income. And so uh, that's kind of the niche that I've focused on. Um, of course, I've helped first-time buyers and sellers and stuff like that. But that was really what I leaned into in those first two years uh, in, in my real estate career. And then 2021, uh, Johnny Christensen, our regional OP, invited me to step in and serve as the uh, this, this team leader CEO at the KW Westfield office. And so I've been in that role since December of 2021. So coming up on two years now. Um, I participated in over 20 different investments. And the reason why I share that is because I'm going to give you some tangible resources today that can also help with your wealth building journey. Okay. Uh, that's something that's important to me is, is helping people to achieve financial freedom. So we'll cover some of those things. I'm going to talk fast. I normally don't talk this fast, but we have a lot to get through. And I want to make sure that uh, you guys get as much value as possible in this 45 minutes since I don't get to see you every week, right? So it's a kind of a one-time experience. And I want to make sure you guys get as, as much value as possible. Um, I am addicted to growth. I love self-development. This is another thing that a mentor put me on in, in, when I was about 20 years old. He told me there are three things that you can invest in that will have the biggest impact on your life, your wealth. And he said, and this was an individual, his name is Steve Peterson. He created a company called Peterson's Incorporated, and uh, they built the big machinery for Nestle. They built some of the rocket boosters for NASA, and he made his billionth dollar when I was his assistant. And so I learned from this individual a lot of techniques on how to provide value to other people. And uh, at the same time, he just gave me three keys. He said, if you want to achieve success in life, these are the three things that you need to invest into. I won't go too much into my backstory, but I want to give you some context so you understand how powerful this was. When I was 14 years old, my family experienced homelessness. And this was due to some decisions that my parents had made, some of the addictions that uh, they had uh, really, you know, stuck to to avoid some of the pain that they were going through. Uh, both my, my uh, grandmothers died on both my dad's side and my mother's side uh, when I was about 12 years old. And this kind of just sent us down this whirlwind. And so I'm sharing this for context of going from that kind of situation to where I'm at today is a world apart, such a different experience. And I'll tell you that it was that these three keys that Steve Peterson told me when I was 20 years old, that completely changed my family trajectory. Okay. So the first thing that he said to invest in was yourself. He said, invest in yourself. You will always pay the best dividends. Okay. Most people look at an asset, they look at the stocks, they look at real estate, they look at these external factors to invest in, and they forget to invest in their most valuable asset, which is themselves. Okay. Um, I skipped college, I went right into sales. Uh, and at the same time, I've probably spent close to 500,000, 750, somewhere in that ballpark over the last seven to 10 years in self-development. Uh, and so I've really leaned into that thought philosophy of making sure that I am consistently on an annual basis. I spend about 10 to 15% of my income going back into myself. Okay. So I'm not just looking at re rental properties or assets. I'm looking at myself as my greatest asset. Okay. So I highly encourage, make sure that's at the top of your focus for quarter four and 2024 is having some way that you're investing in yourself. Number two, he said was to invest in something called network equity. He said network equity. And I didn't understand what that meant at that time. But he said that the people that you connect with will have, will be, have the, the second greatest impact on your wealth, your life, your business. Okay. So being very intentional about the people that you're surrounding yourself with. And you probably have heard it this, said this way, that you are the average of the five people you surround yourself with. Right. So thinking about being very intentional about how you are investing into other people, into the relationships that you know are aligned with your long-term goals. Such an important key. Does anybody want to guess the third thing that he said to invest in, which was a real asset this time? Real estate. Okay, real estate. And uh, again, 20 years old, I had no clue what that meant to get, you know, uh, start investing in real estate. And it wasn't until 2016 that I had a great mentor who actually helped me step into that. 
And, uh, and so we have focused on kind of a wide range of different uh, uh, properties. We've done, we started with single family, just long-term rentals. My wife and I then did, uh, started doing Airbnbs. We have two Airbnbs here in Utah. Uh, and then we got more so into commercial. We did some properties out of state as well in Alabama. Uh, but most of our stuff today is uh, we have only four single families now. Most everything else is commercial assets that we own. And a lot of those are, are larger partnerships. The Top Golf and Vineyard uh, was one of those that we invested into in 2019. Obviously just opened up uh, last year. Um, and then some other stuff here in Salt Lake County, actually. So, and I have a beautiful wife who has supported me on this, this crazy journey. And uh, she's been super helpful <clears throat> with making all of this come to reality. But I wanted to give you guys some of my backstory so you have some context of where these lessons have come th from that I'm going to share with you today. So the topic is the science of achievement. Okay, This is my success system that I'd highly encourage you take some pieces or the whole package and implement in your business and life. Okay. And the first piece is uh, this study. This was uh, uh, the Harvard written goal study. Has anybody heard of this data or heard this, this study? Really interesting. So uh, what they did is they interviewed a bunch of graduates and they looked at uh, how they set goals, if they had goals, and if they had set goals, did they write them down? Okay, so some people had goals in their head, didn't actually write them down. But they, they found that 3% of people of those Harvard graduates had written goals, defined written goals. And then 13% had a goal, but they did not write it down on paper. So they had something that they were chasing, but it wasn't actually written down. And then 84% did not set any goals. Okay. And if you look at the results, the 3% of individuals that had clear written goals earned 10 times as much as the other 97% combined. Pretty wild. And then the 13% that had goals but did not commit to it on paper, they were earning twice as much as the bottom 84%. So I wanna highly encourage the importance of writing your goals down, getting very clear about what it is that you want, okay? And we're gonna go through each of these laws, I call them the seven laws of achievement, and we're gonna break these down. And <clears throat> the first one, uh, there's a, a good quote by Jim Rohn. Has anybody listen to Jim Rohn's content? Okay. Um, he's passed away now, but he has a lot of great stuff on YouTube that you can check out. And he says that five years from now, you will end up in either a well-designed destination or an undesigned destination. Okay. You'll end up in a well-designed destination or an undesigned destination. Now we're in the real estate space, so I'm going to draw some analogies here. What is the first step that a builder does when somebody says, I'm ready to buy a home for a custom home? What does the builder do? They make the plans where they say, what do you want, right? They don't say, yeah, it's going to cost 1.2 million before somebody even defines what they want, right? So first comes the blueprint. First comes the plans. And our lives and our businesses have to be the same way. We have to get clear about what is it that you want in your business, in your life, in your wealth that you're actually going to focus on, okay? Write this down. Vague goals produce vague results. Vague goals produce vague results. So the law of clarity is spend some time getting very intentional about what it is that you want out of life. And what I would encourage is to do that in what we'll call the seven riches of life, the seven different areas of life. So it's not just business that you're defining goals in. You actually want to define fun goals. Like what kind of fun do I want to have this year? You want to define your travel goals. You want to define your health goals. And this is just a snapshot of, of I just have it on a spreadsheet. So it's kind of just like a, a checklist, a bucket list that I can go cross things off when I accomplish it. But I first have to define what are those fun things that I'd like to do in my lifetime? And what are some of those that I'd like to do this year? And so get very clear about just naming one, two th things in those different areas of life. Okay. What do you want for your relationships? What do you want for your health? What do you want for your business? Okay, start thinking in these different categories. I've done all of those, yeah. So these, and, and if I go further down, it's the stuff that I have not yet 
accomplished. That's on my checklist. So just write a list. It could be on paper. You can do it on a spreadsheet. Whatever it is, just have a list of goals that you are focused on and then ask yourself by when. When do I want to accomplish this? One great question to ask yourself is what stories do I want to tell my grandkids when I'm on my rocking chair? Okay. What are some of the experiences that I'd love to reminisce on in my later years? Another good question to ask is what do you want to be remembered for? That might shift how you do business. It might shift how you approach some of your work-life balance, right? There's the idea that there's a book called uh, The Five Regrets of the Dying. Has anybody read that book? So uh, one of the interesting ones is that nobody, there's a, a nurse, she uh, would spend time with people who were passing away. So they had usually three to six months to live. And she would ask, ask this question of what were your regrets? What were some of your greatest accomplishments? And she ended up boiling it down to this book that has what were the five most common regrets that people have. The funny thing is none of them said that I wish I would have worked more, right? And so part of, of your focus when it comes to your goals and gaining clarity is asking yourself, what do I want life to look like five years, 10 years, 15 years down the road? I know that's a little hard, to quantify, but just ask yourself, well, what would a, a, a perfect day look like? Would it be me working 12 hours through the day? Or might I be able to, because of the freedom I've acquired through passive income, through investments, through my real estate business, might I be able to spend two hours working on my business and the other hours doing things that I like doing, right? So just start getting clarity around that. Um, I... Again, I kind of shared this in the beginning. I have committed every year to putting a portion of my income towards self-development. And so, and that's the that's the nice thing is you can start with whatever level you've got. And so sometimes that might be you spending a hundred dollars over the year to buy books, right? There's a lot of free content now nowadays. So uh, you know, start where you're at. But what I would encourage is find yourself a way to get into different circles. And this was something that um, I started doing about six years ago now. And I would put myself, this was a island called uh, Dominica. And this was a, a week long goal setting process that we went through. Um, and with some, some phenomenal individuals. Does anybody know Tony Childs in this office? Okay, awesome. A few. So he's a, he's a rock star and uh, he walked us through this amazing experience and helped us get clarity around what the, thing, the, the things that we wanted. And so that self-development side is making sure that you're investing in yourself. There's this quote by Jim Rohn, to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. If you work hard on your job, you can make a living. If you work hard on yourself, then you can make a fortune. And then this other one is success is not pursued. It is to be attracted by the person you become. So Jim Rohn, he talks about this interesting idea. He says that <clears throat> earn a million dollars, not for the money. Don't make the million dollars the goal. The goal should actually be, who would it require me to become to achieve that great feat? And you can say this for whatever amount. So if the goal is hundred grand, you can say, who would I need to be in order to earn $100,000? Because then it starts you to, to think about the amount of value that you have to provide for other people to get to that level, right? So it causes you to think a little bit different. Law number two, law of purpose. So this was... Uh, a lesson that I learned, uh, I would say far more on a, a deeper level in 2018. Uh, in, in door to door, there's these competitions that they host. And one of them is called the Soul Survivor. And it's basically a bracket style. So it starts with about the top 200 sales professionals in the company. And then every week, it whittles down to the top two. And uh, for two years back to back, it was me and Mike Taylor going head, head to head. And Mike Taylor was uh, my arch nemesis at that time. He's a great friend today. Uh, but <clears throat> something happened going into year two because year one, he destroyed me, okay? And he, he uh, and we were selling direct TV services door to door. I was in uh, Chicago at this time. And the second year, I had a lot of spite for, I would say the embarrassment that he caused the year before, right? And so uh, I made it a goal that I was going to beat Mike in this competition. And uh, I had a coach at the time 
and I was sharing with him how important this week meant to me. And he said in the previous record for sales in a week was 32 sold customers uh, for direct TV services. And, um, and so I, I made a goal. I was going to beat, and that record was set by Mike Taylor. And so I was like, I'm going to beat his record. I'm going to beat the direct TV company record. And I'm going to get 34 sales this week. Okay. And that was the goal that I'd set. And my coach at the time asked me, what was the actual purpose? Cause he's like, if you're going to, if your goal is to, to beat Mike lose, or you don't have the greatest chance at winning, he said, you have to think about something beyond yourself. That could be a driving force. And so together he coached me through this. And what we ended up identifying was again, going back to something that's important to me that I'm passionate about was feeding kids. And I, I, this is from a personal experience that I had when I was a kid, but I wanted to make sure that I could give back to other kids in that same situation. And so I said, well, what if we change the focus? What if we change the approach? And so what I did uh, during this week and, and my coach really helped me to, to create this experience is he helped, he had me to envision, I know this might seem a little drastic. You don't have to go to this far of an extent, but I promise the purpose behind what you do matters. Okay. But what he had me do is I'd visualize as I was knocking doors that every time I got a cell, I was able to turn around and give these kids and I'd have to visualize this. Obviously there's not kids following me around, but I'd be able to give them food. And if I got tired at seven o'clock, cause I'd start knocking around eight 30 in the morning. If I got tired at seven o'clock and man, I want to go home or it's, it's, it's getting dark. I don't want to knock people's doors when, when it's dark. What he would tell me to do is when you're ready to quit, you have to tell all these kids that are following you around. And I'm sorry, I'm tired. I can't feed you. And this little shift, now I know this was a trick that I played on my mind, but because it wasn't about me, it was about somebody else, this idea. And the goal that my coach had, had me commit to is donating. I ended up donating $10,000 to this charity that I care about that helps with this specific cause. And so the proceeds from sales that week contributed to that cause. And so it caused me to go further and faster than I normally would. So my one encouragement is to find out what matters for you. It might be your kids, might be an experience that you've had growing up. It might be a vision of the future. Not everybody's motivated towards pain. I am. Okay. I did not want to have to tell those kids, sorry, I'm just too tired today. Okay. So just think about what is it for you that could be a driving force and get clarity around what that purpose is. It could be that you want to change your family tree. Okay. Ed Milo talks about this, that every family has the one that's going to shift the family trajectory forever. Okay. You might be that one. The other question is, well, how am I showing up for the people that I do care about? So maybe it's just your family internally. Okay. It doesn't have to be this grand idea, but whatever is going to motivate you to go further. Law of planning. Uh, this Abraham Lincoln quote, he says, to give me six hours to chop down a tree and I'll spend the first four sharpening an axe. There's a book called The E-Myth. Has anybody read that? Okay. So there's a core principle in this book, and it says that we need to focus not just on working in the business. We also need to work on the business. Now, too often, real estate professionals, we get stuck working consistently in or on the business. What do you think? Yeah. When you have clients calling or when you have deals that you're working on on a daily basis, that's working in the business, okay? Working on the business is saying, well, what lead gen strategies do I have activated in my business today? And which ones would I like to activate or start doing in the next couple of weeks or a couple of months? And saying, well, what processes do I currently have? What systems do I currently have in my business and which ones can be enhanced? How can I deliver more value to more people? So working on the business is actually what real estate professionals often tend not to do, even though it's necessary. So start thinking about working on the business might be saying, I need to actually hire leverage. I need to bring on an admin or a TC or a showing assistant or X, Y, Z. You need to bring somebody into your business to get to that next level. So working on the business is an important key. Do you have a thought? So yeah, sorry, I, I work in construction and I see model home agents, you know, all the time and I encourage them to not waste their downtime. 
they're waiting for clients to walk in the front door, and when they're not waiting, or and when they are waiting, they're watching Netflix. It's an abject <laughs> waste of your time. And I, I tell people, because then they go to clients, one or two or three come in, they waste two out of the three opportunities because they don't have a plan, they don't have a way to deal with all of that. I tell people, slow down to speed up, think it through, the seven habits of highly effective people begin with the end in mind. Yeah. So it's this is a profound principle. Love that. Thank you for sharing that. And here's what most common, how many of you have a 36 touch that is consistently delivered to your database? Please raise your hand. Okay. About a quarter of the room, maybe less than a quarter. That's one of those prime examples of agents not working on the business. If they don't have a 36 touch that's activated, they haven't put the systems in place to, to make sure that's done consistently. Um, I, I, I watch uh, How I Met Your Mother. It's hilarious. And there's uh, you know a few episodes where one of the main characters, he goes and starts his own architecture firm and he spends all of his time getting it ready, mm -hmm. right? The perfect yeah. pen, the perfect desk set, you know, all of For those sure. things and doesn't spend the effort to go and do the actual business generating activities mm -hmm. Because those are the things that make us uncomfortable. For sure. And so I think that uh, through all of the trainings that we do for new agents or people who aren't necessarily new but want to ramp up, we focus a lot on, oh, build your site, do all, you know, all yeah. of these things. But those aren't the things that bring in money. Those aren't mm -hmm. the things that actually generate the business. Those are the things that you need to do but don't need to do now. For sure. Do the things you need to do now. Yeah. You're hitting on a key point. And this is actually one of the laws that we're going to get to, right, is, is priority. Not all priorities are created equal. So lead generation, the actual activities that create income in this industry are the things that often agents will avoid by doing the busy work, right? So they will work on the website. They will, I've got to work on the 36 touch. Here's where the punchline on this is it should be time blocked on your calendar. So if you just say, these are my two hours per week dedicated to working on the business, all the other timelines should be focused working in the business, right? But oftentimes what people do is they don't even time block and put it on their calendar and clarify, this is my lead generation time, this is my servicing clients time, and this is my working on the business, improving systems, processes, procedures time, okay? So just having 90 minutes to three hours on your calendar throughout the week, and typically what I would encourage is that should be like four o'clock in the afternoon or after, or on a Saturday, okay? Like do not do that on a Tuesday at 9 a.m., it's not, not the highest and best use of time. So thank you for pointing that out because that's such an important key. So plan out. Um, and then the next one is prioritization. So you have to prioritize the 80-20 rule. Okay. Is realizing that 80% of the results that you want come from 20% of your actions. The opposite is also true. Okay. The 20, when people aren't hitting their goals, typically it's because they're focused on the 80% that only brings them 20% of the results that they want, the busy work. So we have to get very intentional and say, well, not all action items or not all priorities are created equal. So when you have a to-do list, that's great. You should designate that as the 80% stuff. You should have a separate list called your success list that is your 20% items. Okay. If you know that it takes three listing appointments per month to hit your annual goal, those three listing appointments should be done before all else, right? The lead generation for those listing appointments. And that should be on the success list. So the success list, my encouragement is to separate your success list and your to-do list. Because if, you're, if your mind sees any of those to-do list items, guess what tends to get done? The easier things. Right, we're, we're creatures of habit and we like conserving energy. And so we'll say, well, that to-do list will only take me 10 minutes. And then guess how long it really takes? Because you get sent down a rabbit hole. Has anybody opened an email to go find a specific email? And then they're like, wait, why am I in my inbox again? Right, same thing happens with your task list. And so that's why my encouragement is to separate those. And we'll talk about a very simple strategy to do that in a minute. The law of action. There is a difference be between being effective and being efficient, okay? Effective 
is doing the right things. Efficient is getting the right things done. Okay. And so you have to have a balance here. You have to be very clear around what is actually going to get the result that you want in your business. Here's an example. Efficiency is I can send an email to a thousand people in how many seconds if I do a mass email? 10, 15 seconds, pretty easy. That's efficient. But it, what is super effective is getting voice to voice or face to face with somebody and having a genuine conversation. It's not efficient. It takes a lot more energy, a lot more time and a different skill set, but it gives you far better results. Okay, so don't sacrifice your effectiveness for efficiency. Okay, now when you're scaling your business, you do need to find ways to be more efficient and bring in leverage of tools, technology, or people. But you just be, want to be mindful of this and say, in this kind of market that we're in right now, you actually want to focus on the effective items, not just being efficient. Okay, we're not in a speed-based market. We're in a skill-based market. And the efficiency or the effectiveness, excuse me, is what matters most right now. Okay. Law of persistence. The best math you can learn is how to calculate the future cost of your current decisions. Okay. Learn how to calculate the future cost of your current decisions. Now, Einstein, <clears throat> he said something was the eighth wonder of the world. What is it? Compounding interest. Are you okay if I say that he's wrong? Cody, is that all right? With you. Okay, you're not going to fight me about it. So I, I think that he might be slightly off. I think that there's something actually more powerful than compounding interest. Now, compounding interest obviously has a huge impact on your wealth. What I'd say has a bigger impact on your results in life and in business is compounding commitment. When people double down consistently over an extended period of, to period of time on something they said they were going to do. I've studied a lot of top performers. And one of the things that I've noticed is that there's no one way to success. And at the same time, there's really only one way to success. Okay. So the no one way to success means I, I was at mega camp last month and I watched Gary interview, I don't know, 70, 80 people at mega camp, top producers across the country, making an amazing business, created an amazing business. Guess how many of them did things the exact same. None of them. They all had different lead generation strategies and, and things that they had deployed to, to create a massive business. And so there's not one way to success. You can do this real estate industry in so many different ways and create the results you want. And at the same time, one common theme was that they all stayed consistent over time with something. We had, there's one gal on, on the stage, they did 400 open houses last year. How many of us did 40 last year, right? Now, not saying that open houses has to be your strategy, but if it is, you've got to do it a ton. You've got to lean into and, and really rely on compounding commitment, okay? Doing things consistently over an extended period, period of time. So building a, a successful business in life is a marathon. It's not a sprint. The law of review and evaluation. So performance is measured, performance improves. When performance is measured and reported, the rate of improvement accelerates. So uh, I've obviously in my team leader role had the chance to interview a lot of our top performers. And you'll find how interesting it is to where they don't actually know how much business they've sold this year. Like I actually usually know more data about their business than they do, right? And I get it. Some top performers, they're going fast. I totally get it. And I do believe if they had a grip on their metrics, there's this idea that success leaves clues. Have you guys heard that? Okay. Success leaves clues. One of the greatest things you can do is look at your own success and be able to figure out why it happened. So for example, when we look at a multi-year trend, which KW has access to those reports for every agent, if you look at your multi-year trend and you start noticing every single November and December, my business completely goes sideways, completely falls off. And that's been a trend for the past four years. There might be a story there. Well, the numbers might be telling us a story that we can dig into. But if you don't track your success, it's hard to, to duplicate it moving forward. Okay. 
So I highly encourage to track your business, track your goals. And this is just, I'm giving you a, a, an example in business, but you can do the same thing with your health goals as well. Tend to track your fitness targets. You tend to do far better than those who do not track it. Um, one little encouragement is just check in every week. Um, I have a just a 30 minute simple goal setting process where I check in and we're gonna go through this together, but just check in with what my targets were, how I did and what I wanna do better the following week. So those are the seven laws of achievement. So those are more guiding principles. Now we're gonna get into more tactical strategy. Cool. So the goal, the goal achievement system. This is what gives you the gas, G-A-S, to be able to accomplish your goals. And you're gonna start with having, writing down your long-term goals. So what is it that you want long-term? And that could be three years, five years, 10 years, 50 years, whatever timeline you wanna have, but it's typically gonna be more than three years down the road, okay, is your long-range goals. You're then gonna define a GPS, a GPS stands for your goals, priorities, and strategies. Um, some of the old timers in here might know it as a one, three, five. That's what KW used to call it. It's now called a GPS. You're then gonna be able to tie that into something called a 411. And your 411 stands for four weeks, one month, one year. It's a very simple system that you can use to help you stay on track with your GPS. And I'll be breaking down all of these, but I'm just giving you the overview of this first. And then you're going to time block your priorities that were on your 411 onto your calendar and okay? making sure that they do show up on your schedule throughout the week. And then again, we talked about having a task list, which is separate from your success list. Your 411 really becomes your success list that you focus on. So this is just, uh, this is one of our um, agents' GPSs, and this is just an example of clarifying when you have a GPS, you have your primary goal. What is it that you're chasing for the year? And then you want to reverse engineer and ask, what three priorities, if I focused on, would have the greatest impact on me accomplishing that goal? Okay, so you start looking at what are the big rocks that I can turn over that would cause me to achieve, in this case, $250,000 in the next 12 months. Well, for this person, they said, I want to provide people to uh, provide value to people that I know, my sphere of influence. So that was their pillar one. And what they then did is you want to create five strategies that can support that. So you say, well, how do I provide value to my sphere? In what ways? What am I going to do specifically to make that happen? So they started with creating a database of a certain number of people, connecting with 13 people in their database per day. And this just came from the economic model. So they, they figured out their numbers, reverse engineered it and said, okay, well, in order for me to sell 20 homes, I need to talk to 13 people a day based off their own conversion rates. So you can go through that process. KW has a tool called the economic model and, um, and it will help you to define those numbers. And that makes it very far more believable any goal that you're chasing when you can break it down to, well, what do I have to do per day rather than looking at a big goal that's down the road? So they have three priorities on here. And your GPS, I want you to think of that kind of like your map. How many of you have uh, an iPhone in here? Okay, and how many of you have an Android? Okay, no shaming in here, right? How many of you have a map built in like Google Maps or iMaps? Okay, all of us. So if we were going to take a trip to, let's say, Florida, I know there might be some of you that can wing it in here and you can just find your way. How many of you, though, would prefer to just use a GPS to tell you where to go, right? So your GPS business term is you essentially programming a destination. So it's you saying, I want to be at $250,000 at the end of the year. I want to be in Florida in two days or however long it's gonna to take to drive there, right? Now your 411 is interesting. The 411 is a tool that most people overlooked or, or they neglect. Your 411 is basically the turn by turn signal telling you how to get to your destination. The 411 is what you actually look at every single week. Your GPS stays the same throughout the year. Your 411 adapts every single week. Because what happens if we're driving on I-15 and there's a car accident? What does your phone tell you to do? Reroute, gotta take a different route, right? Let's adjust. 
Most people don't do that, unfortunately, with their goals until it's too late. They just, and they just internal, they fill it. They're like, oh, it's six months. I'm not halfway to my goal. I've got to lower the what? Goal instead of adjusting the action steps is typically what happens. That's a good uh, perspective. Grant Cardone talks about, he says, most people lower their goals if they're not on track. Don't be like that. Instead, change your action steps. What do I need to adjust personally to stay on track? So your 411 help, helps you do that on a weekly basis. 10 minute process, very simple of saying, okay, on a 411, what you would do, I'm gonna actually use this whiteboard to draw this up. Actually, I'm gonna pull out the sheet. So you all have this sheet in front of you. And this is, um, is something I created that was a merge of KW's 411, their GPS, and then this book called The 12 Week Year. So anybody read that book? Yeah, it's an awesome book. So The 12 Week Year, you don't have to go read it. I'll just kind of give you a little breakdown of what it is. So the 12 week year is focusing on most people when they set an annual target, your brain actually can't comprehend 12 months down the road. It's actually too far in the distance. It's kind of like saying, can you see pace in from here? No, but we do know it's out there, right? You can't actually see it. And your goals typically are very much the same. Like the goal might be so far down the road, it's hard to see the today outputs that need to happen to get you there. So the 12 week year says, well, actually, if we set three month targets, we're far more effective and efficient. And they've, they've, they've done this study where you actually look at people in uh, a lot of jobs, they'll have like sales quotas. Guess when they typically have the best quarter? First quarter. Why is that? Yeah. Shorter period of time, they realize they're behind their energy. Their focus is heightened. It's, it's such a different perspective than January 1st. Right. And so you can actually use the same practice and just setting your annual goals, but then saying, well, what would have to happen this quarter for me to stay on track with my annual goals? For example, if I were going to sell 12 homes in a year, how many would I need to do this month? One. If I was going to do 24 transactions this year, how many would I have to do this month too. So it makes it far easier to just say, well, bless you. I'm going to focus on the small activities that will lead to the bigger outcome that I want. The 12 year also focuses on, again, executing on short-term plan that aligns with the long-term vision. The system requires breaking down long-term goals into shorter milestones that can be measured and tracked. And then the importance is this accountability. Accountability is the key to success and should be built into the process. So what this allows you to do is check in with your goals progress every week in less than 15 minutes. Okay. And determine, do I need to reroute? Do I need to make an adjustment or am I on track? Okay. And so what happens is up at the top and you have three different categories. Again, I can send the template. So if you want to change it, that's totally fine for me. I chose life, business, and wealth. And when I say life for me, that's relationships, it's health. So it's kind of a a larger sum of things. The fun things that I want to do um, are all under that bucket. Then my business obviously is going to be focused on what is my real estate business going to do this year? And then the third option, the third uh, column is wealth. So what do I want to do for my financials over the next 12 months? Okay. And what I'm doing is at the top, the the you'll see a little blank space. You can say my, my target for, actually might have it. There we go. So the very top, you put in my target for quarter one or quarter four of 2023 is this. These are my targets that I'm chasing. So again, if I'm aiming for 24 units over the year, that means this quarter I'm focused on six. And so all I'm looking at every day is six. And then I say, well, what would have to happen on a weekly basis? How many appointments do I need to set and take to be able to lead to six transactions over the year? And now that's my only thing that I'm looking at is one appointment per month or one appointment per week. Okay. Now, if I get off track two weeks in, and I, I didn't set an appointment. What am I going to do that following week? Yeah. Two appointments. Now, what most people do is they wait six months before they realize they're far off track and they say, well, I've got to get 37 appointments. <laughs> Doable or not? Doable. Realistic? Meh. Depends on the person, right? But the likelihood is if they haven't looked at, if they were looking at their goals on a weekly basis, it would far, it'd be far easier to course correct along the way. Does that make sense? 
So these small adjustments make a big impact over time. Did he? Wow. Who's up for that task? <laughs> and then you'll see this uh, scoring section. I might have changed it to progress made. So the scoring section is just, it's super simple. You literally just put a one or a zero. One says, yes, I did it. Zero means no, I didn't. And at the end of the week, you mark up the, the, the number of yeses that you did and you create a percentage, okay? So what this allows you to do over the end of the 12 weeks is uh, in the book, it says that if you hit your goal at roughly 80%, it's very likely you're gonna achieve your annual goal, okay? So it's not about perfection. It's just about progress and staying consistent. But that accountability of looking at it every week and just saying, well, what am I gonna, what are the three big rocks in my business this week? What are the three big rocks in my life this week that I'm gonna focus on? This becomes the success list that you wanna look at before you look at the to do list. Does that help? Okay, so GPS is your map, 411 becomes the compass. Obviously, real estate, your industry is the vehicle. And then you've got persistence is the fuel. So all four of those components are important. And this persistence is that compounding commitment that we talked about, okay? So that is the toolkit that I would suggest you have in place going into quarter four, is making sure that you have these pieces readily available to uh, support your business. Have your clearly defined goal. What do you wanna accomplish by the end of the year? What's your roadmap, the, the compass? It's gonna be your 411 and you're gonna check in with it weekly and just stay committed over time, okay? All right, we're gonna breeze through this part. So Mofarize, this is just one strategy that you can use to get more business in qu quarter four, is you want to Mofarize your business to winterize your business. What's, a, what's the definition of a Mofar? Make an offer for immediate response, okay? So it's a marketing strategy technique. Instead of just saying, I'm in real estate, Make an offer that allows somebody to engage with you because you want to highlight the motivated. You want to find the motivated in this market. Okay. Does anybody know what this equation is? It's Newton's law. Okay. Newton's law. Written with the crayon, I know it's simple, right? Easy. So I'm not gonna go through all of these uh, just because of time, but the law of inertia is the reality that an object at rest will, will remain at rest. And there's always an initial inertia or resistance that must be overcome. So in this market, do buyers have a concern with moving forward right now? And if, if so, what is that concern? Rates, okay. So I would suggest that the greatest marketing play you can make right now, at least for the next year, is gonna be solving that problem for your clients. Because guess who else it holds back as well? The sellers, not just buyers, right? Because most people say, well, if I get a sell at my 3.5% interest rate, I've gotta go buy at this XYZ interest rate, right? And that also prevents them from moving forward. So if you solve that, for example, let's jump into some examples of this. Um, I'm not going to go through all these for the sake of time. I will send these slides, but these are great examples where any successful company that you study, you'll find that they consistently have mofers. 25% off, $150 or more. Uh, AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon. Switch, get a new phone. Like all these different companies have offers that they're making. I don't see that consistently with real estate professionals. They typically market themselves. They don't market solutions or off opportunities for clients. That's the challenge. So what those look like in real estate, thinking of selling, I have a buyer. Okay, I already have a buyer lined up for your home. It's a different approach. Offering to do, uh, to find the value of, of their home instantly. Yeah.
So, yeah, exactly. So do some lead generation. <laughs> Do some lead generation up front, right? Find buyers. Most, it's typically in this market fairly easy to find buyers, a little harder to find sellers, right? So have buyers in your pocket to be able to use that strategy. And if the home is not a work for them, then that's totally fine. And that's, I believe that her strategy is if that home does not fit that buyer, she's going to turn that into a listing conversation. Yeah. The other thing that I, that I see a lot is people are, are pausing and they may, whatever the reason is, but I hear a reason a lot. I hear a reason a lot that is I'm going to wait for prices to come down. Right. Over the last 80 years, 70% price prices went up seven, per, seven times prices went down one time prices remain flat. Bad argument. Secondly, what's going to happen the minute rates come down, prices are going to go up. And so people are in the same exact situation. If they buy now and rates go down, they're in a better situation. And communicating that succinctly and, and powerfully to them is key. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. The quality of conversations that we're having with our clients right now matter. And uh, I, I somehow the slide did not end up in here, but one of the greatest mofers that I'm seeing right now is saying, get a 4% or 4.5, whatever number you want to throw out there, get a 4.5% interest rate or 4.5% interest rates are still out there ask me how something to that effect because if we know seven percent interest rates is what's holding people back and you can advertise a 4.5 right people are going to be reaching out about well how do i take advantage of that what do i have to do now you have to be equipped and there's the kw uh, mortgage hacks playbook that goes through there's actually three different strategies to help somebody be able to lock in an interest rate sometimes in the threes right so you've got to go study those, be aware of those, seller financing. Uh, you have to understand uh, assumable loans and, uh, and and start saying that there are options to their greatest challenge right now. Okay, And then depending on their situation, that's going to guide how you have to help them proceed. Sometimes they might still end up having to buy and doing a 2-1 buy down and getting a 5% interest rate. Okay, But they just didn't want the 7. And that was the thing that was holding them back. So offer solutions. And then get into conversation with them to find out their challenges and help them through that. Okay. So that's the greatest. And I, I apologize. I don't have that slide in here, but it's a, there's one on YouTube where they posted, you know, three point, uh, 3% interest rates are back. Ask me how that's what it was. And he had 2.7 million views in 24 hours. Do you think people are searching for that stuff right now? Yeah. So that's one encouragement. Um, any ahas or questions as we wrap up today? I love the last thing you just said um, because everyone feels like he has a problem or that they can't make it work. So I do lots of posting. I, I'm a self-development nut like you. So I really loved everything. Um, but well, this goal system is also excellent. And I, I don't know if anyone else has this question. The, I'm new to Keller Williams. So is there a class or will we do anything, whoever's here that's in charge, will we do anything before the end of the year where we spend two or three hours as a group individually working on something like this, like goal setting for the new year, planning for the new year? Do we do that in this office? Yeah. On the calendar. Well, if you use something like this, I'd be nice to have a group. Yeah. Uh, but I have another program I could go through, but I'd like to send Yeah, shoot me a text. Um, for those we do have something called the retreat that we do at Westfield. Danny, you've been to that uh, event before. Um within context, it does depend on seating. Uh we we can only have a hundred people in our space and we usually pack that, but it's a seven hour deep dive on goal setting. So it's intense. Okay. Yeah. That may be a great question to ask Tyler. So if there's not something, there's a backup option, but KW also has their business planning clinic. So that's virtual. KW does offer that. Um, that'd be another great thing to put on the counter as well. That's another option. Yeah. Yes. Lisa. Yeah.
KW has the wealth community now. And if you don't know where to start with wealth, I would highly suggest taking the eight weeks to wealth class that's offered through that. And um, to join the community, it's $200 a month, but you get lots of resources and information that you probably have never, lots of things you've probably never heard of that will kind of blow your mind. So yeah, it, it's a really awesome community. So if you have That's wealth great. goals that even if you don't have any money right now, join the wealth community. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And don't let the word wealth scare you. It's really just financial freedom. So it's like, it starts with budgeting and all these little kind of core pieces to make sure that you're financially stable so that's where it starts and then investing and stuff is beyond that but it, they do go through all the things that's great thank you awesome okay well i know we have a rock star that's coming up after me this is the real me event got adam from ibex uh so adam rock, thank you i don't know about rock star i feel like i'm kind of a i don't know i'm 48 and i don't know anyone in here about this age and i just feel like Things start to hurt more. My belly sticks out more. It's just it's all going downhill. Yes, so I don't know yes. about rock star. So anyway, thank you for uh, letting me come today. I wanted to tell you a story. I don't know if I mentioned this last time. Did I tell you where okay. Ibex got started? Does anybody know this story? Where Ibex got started? Oh, good. Well, I'm going to tell it. So seven years ago, me, my brother, and Chad Holmes, if you know him, were eating at my favorite restaurant, which is chuck in South Ogden, by the way. And what do you think my wife calls it? Up Chuck, yeah. But I love Chuck Ram. It's my favorite restaurant. And that's where we decided at that moment we were going to start a home warranty company. We didn't know the name, but the first time the idea ever popped into anyone's head was in booth four at South Ogden Chuck Ram. There's a picture of it up in our office. And we go there on our anniversary on the 18th of February every year. And I eat till I'm sick. But that's where Ibex was started. But the reason I tell you that story is because I want you to know that this company is a local company. I was selling real estate prior to this with my brother. And we decided, hey, if we're going to be a home warranty company, we want to be the best home warranty company out there. We want to do things different. And I feel like we do at Ibex. We do things different. One of the things I just passed out right here was a picture of a house. Uh, Shoni was talking about solutions. I was an agent, and I wanted a solution, a different solution when it came to home warranty companies. So what we decided to do is everything that's in yellow on that picture, we cover 100%. So you'll never have a client call you and be like, hey, they're not covering my refrigerator. They're not covering my water heater. They're not covering my furnace. They're not covering my AC because of some exclusion or anything like that. If it's in yellow, just show them that picture. They'll call Ibex and they'll get a yes all the time. That is what we wanted to do. Uh, make it super simple and super easy. Also, we don't charge additional fees to put things in, nickel and dime, all that kind of stuff. Um, this is Keller Williams Day for us. I did breakfast at Orem. I'm doing lunch here. Chad is in Midvale doing lunch. And then on Thursday, I'm helping pick up 200 or 2,000 donuts to take to a Halloween party. Um, so anyway, I just appreciate the heck out of Keller Williams. And if there's anything that we can ever do for you, please uh, feel free to call anytime. Um, we got food back there and uh, I'll be around to answer any questions. And just thanks for your time. I appreciate you.
Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. 